So, good morning. My name is uh, Shi Xing. I want to thank you once again for coming here, uh, to, you know, uh, just after the COVID. So, uh, is my sound okay? So, can you hear me? Okay, thank you. So, today I would like to introduce to you about uh, our product. And uh, actually, a lot of our colleagues from uh, the HQ and China will talk a little bit about the ray tracing and uh, some other products. So I will just talk from an overview perspective to talk a little bit about our work in ecosystem and the support that we can support to uh, pro support we can provide to the developers. So let's come to uh, the topic of imagination. So just now, uh, already you heard some introduction. And I think you already heard about Power VR and imagination. So, uh, in the past, imagination was called Power VR, but then Power VR became a brand, uh, including our GPU and AI uh, acceleration processor. So our company was uh, changed to uh, imagination. So actually, the company was established in 1980s. Back then, there was a wave of starting up the business in GPU. Uh, like dozens of uh, companies, but now those companies are either acquired or shifted to other industries. Not a lot of companies still remain in GPU. Starting from 1980s, in the last century, our product was used in PC, in consoles. There are a lot of uh, imagination IP products, and uh, the most famous one is include the uh, things on the picture so if you're from gaming you know about it so on the right top right corner that's Dreamcast right that's at the end of the last uh, century that was a very famous console that was the first uh, console with a networking capability and on the bottom left you can see uh, the PlayStation Vita and uh, back then that was also a uh, big hit so if you're in gaming uh, you know about that why? Because for imagination, when the product was launched, compared to other GPU architecture, we are different. Uh, our architecture is called TBDR, the uh, tile-based deferred rendering. So if you're in uh, graphics processing, you know that the uh, tile-based deferred rendering uh, is not widely used. Back then, a lot of people used real-time rendering. So on the bottom, uh, on the top left, that was the first chip with a TBDR. And back then, uh, we faced a lot of, uh, uh, you know, skepticism. And for tile-based deferred rendering, it has a lot of uh, merits. For example, for one piece of graphics, it can get uh, split it into different tiles. And then we can uh, get a lot of uh, uh, data processed in the cache. Then we don't need to uh, do a lot of read and write on the memory. And not, not a lot of uh, round trips of data. But uh, maybe people uh, thought that it can impact on the processing performance. But as time goes by, it was proven that actual TBDR has a lot of advantage. And now, Imagination included uh, and uh, some other companies in mobile GPU, they also switched to uh, TBDR. So that's the uh, tile-based deferred rendering. And of course, we do have a lot of patents. So based on TBDR, we also had another layer of deferring. Uh, that means we can further reduce the requirement on the memory. And simply put, GPU from imagination has several features, uh, but I uh, think the detail would be covered by uh, our colleagues uh, later. So on high level, first we have a very uh, good scalability. Just now Trina talked a little bit about that. So we range from the smallest uh, consumer devices which had lower requirements of the performance, right to the PC and database products. We can use the same structure or architecture to support the uh, chip. The other thing is that we are we have the context of mobile uh, devices. So for the power and for the bandwidth, 
those are always our uh, those are always our priorities so in power and in memory bandwidth we always have a, a less limit and uh, the other thing is about the functionality with Kronos and other standard organizations and other ecosystem partners, we cooperate with them very closely. So for OpenGL, yes, and uh, Vulkan, and then that's for graphics, but then for uh, computing, uh, with OpenCL, we, we support all of those. And with Kronos, for graphics and computing, uh, for the new features, like uh, ray tracing uh, for ray tracing in 1980s people started to pay attention to real-time ray tracing uh, before that uh, people would think that uh, uh, for the movies and films uh, normally they use the offline rendering uh, the graphics is good but computing takes a lot of resource but then uh, in like 1918, we started to use uh, real-time ray tracing. But actually, before that, in 2016, we already have had an IP. We had the testing chip uh, that can use GPU to do ray tracing. And later, uh, we launched uh, the ray tracing technology with Vulkan. And uh, to simply introduce to you about the TPDR, so for TPDR, simply put, for example, for the three uh, geometries on the left, if they are put together, uh, it's not like that. Uh, if they are overlapping each other, if we look at it from the camera, uh, they occlude each other. And also when we look at it, uh, of course, we can only see one facade, one side. We cannot see the back side. For the real-time rendering technology, it doesn't care where your camera is. The whole model will get rendered. The textures are all uh, on it. So after the uh, calculation or computing, then depends on where your camera is, it displays what you see. The, the good thing is that it doesn't need to wait. So it doesn't care what uh, are the conditions, but everything is computed. But the thing is, uh, we do get a lot of uh, ineffective computing. For example, you don't see the backside, but it's still processed. For Imagination TBDR, it will look at where the camera is, what you can see. And based on what you can see, it does the computing. For example, the texture, uh, whether we need to draw the texture data from the memory, whether we need to load uh, that into the GPU, we will also uh, make the decision first. So we remove a lot of uh, texture and the, the modeling computing. So that is the biggest merit of a TBDR. We have another technology. We have another latest technology. Uh, just now we mentioned the tra ray tracing. So our colleagues from uh, UK, they will talk a little bit about this. So this is a display of the technology. So we do have two small demos here. On the left, that's earlier. Uh, on the right side, we just did it uh, on GDC in uh, GDC in two days ago. So uh, you can see the merit that it brings. We have the global lighting, we have the shadows. On the left, you can see this uh, person. Uh, the light bounces off it, and you can see that from different angles and, and according to the position of the light source, actually, the lighting can change. And on the right side, you can see that with the change of the light source position, uh, the angle of the sun, and also uh, with uh, the coming and going of the cloud, everything is uh, calculated rather than texture. So in the past, we never would have been able to do this, but now on the GPU we can do it. We don't need uh, a GPU of uh, like several hundred watts, but on the mobile end, only s several watts of budget, we can still do it. And uh, of course, uh, apart from YouTube, uh, we did move to some videos to Billy Billy. So if you are interested, you can uh, follow our account.
And of course, the theme is how uh, the ecosystem helps others. Uh, the key thing is about a lot of the app developers in the ecosystem. In order to help the developers, what kind of work did we do? Uh, here are the several things. First, we provide uh, very good, very abundant Power VR uh, tools, and uh, let me introduce you about what it includes. And later, and then we have the uh, Power VR Graphs SDK. It is an app framework. Uh, there are a lot of uh, already optimized app frameworks, and a lot of instances uh, and samples. Uh, you can do the development there, and we do provide a lot of activities like trainings, workshops. And we have the online community uh, where you can interact with each other. For example, we have the blogs, and we have the emails and telephone uh, Q and A's and so on. And by providing a lot of technical support to the developers, uh, we want the developers can uh, have more. A better uh, experience uh, enabled for their apps developed and uh, through the interaction with the developers we can listen to the market uh, we can get to know what the market needs and then we can uh, develop products accordingly and now I'd like to introduce a little bit more about the PVR tools which include basically the three phases of application uh, development. The first part is uh, the contents creations, our PVR text tools. So in terms of texture, we have this special tool to create those textures and also the imagination patented data uh, pressurizing uh, the memory saving optimizations and the PVR Geopod is another one which is to support the exporting uh, from Maya and the 3ds Max etc to into the imagination uh, tools and then the second part second phase is the uh, contents development tools the tools we provide are including PVR shader editor PVR vframe and a PVR shaman those are the tools which helps you to develop with those contents. You can in real time see the rendering effect as well as some statistics and the feedbacks allowing you to do the development in a better way. And by the third phase, after development, it's time for you to optimize and debug. Uh, we have PVR Tune, PVR Carbon, so you can check the hardware performance analysis and the graphic cores, as well as the frame capture, playback and analysis, understanding how the GPUs and the CPU had been uh, developed, deploying each other. And also with PVR Studio, which is the one we can use to uh, have that integrated IDE with GPU and CPU, understanding how they've been deploying each other. And apart from those, we have a lot of other abundant resources on our developer community online, as well as uh, some special uh, dialogues between us and university students and tutors and quite a lot of events. And something just like what we are having today, this Kronos and Imagination Technology Seminar, but together with uh, our partners, we have uh, optimization trainings and uh, tr uh, other types of events as well. We have that mobile graphics uh, course we developed together with Peking University. These are all free resources available online in our community. And speaking about our ecosystem for GPU, the most important part of that is the gaming related uh, ecosystem. So we have a special team to support the game developers across the globe. Our graphic team basically are comprised of members who have many years of experiences from hardware, API, and application in the gaming industries. And we also have a collaboration with the big studios, such as Roblox and the Tencent, and working together with them to optimize the applications specifically. And you can see that we give them the suggestions and you can see how their app performance got uh, improved and better. 
And apart from that, we've been working together with uh, many gaming engines, those ones that are quite famous for in the world, Epic's Unreal or Unity. We have uh, these 3D engines. We have a, a close, in-depth uh, relationship in cooperation with them. And we're going to hear from some of our colleagues later today. And we are working with many other uh, game creation studios, home or abroad, with our in-depth uh, cooperation to have specific testing for their user cases or before publishing their games. We can run those tests in Power VR supported devices so that after the games are launched to the public, we can ensure that compatibility of the games and we have um, some golden rules that we can provide to them so that with a lot of hardware devices and optimization experiences we have accumulated, uh, we can share those with our partners so that they could avoid those frequently seen problems in the beginning of their uh, development phase, avoiding them uh, in order to avoid having to make corrections afterwards. And for those uh, game testing platforms, we have collaborations as well. The related uh, benchmarking tools and studios, we have in-depth relationship with them as well. Our tools could be integrated into their testing and benchmarking uh, testing tools, such as, uh, for instance, uh, VTest and uh, PerfDog, etc. And we have uh, lectures and courses and trainings and workshops as well as competitions we hold from time to time. So please do pay attention to our uh, dynamics and the latest updates about those events we organize from time to time. And now I'd like to show you some of our partners. Uh, I'm only listing some of them on this screen. So I hope that more partners could join us, work together with us from hardware, software, engines, and studios and tools so that we can have more collaborations. Thank you all for listening.